Hi everyone, welcome back to Java class. In today's session, you will learn how to handle button event in Java programming language. So let us continue our previous program that we have discussed in our previous video session where we have created a login form that contains username, password, login button, and reset button. In this login form, if you enter your username and password and click on login button, you can see this button is not generating any event. It is not in action. At least when you enter your username and password and click on login button, it must show a message. Your login is successful or it is failed. So how will you implement the event handling concept or how will you implement a button event on this login form? You will learn in today's session. So let us move to the concept part and understand the event handling concept. So here you can see we will handle the event or when you enter your username and password and click on login button, it must display a message login successful. But how will you do it? As we have discussed in our previous video session, we have discussed the event delegation model and corresponding to a button, we have an action event. So action event class is responsible to handle a button click event. Right. It contains the information about the event, like who is the source of event, right? And what is the command associated with the event? So this action event class you will use corresponding to this button event. It contains method like get source, get action command. We will explore these methods also. Corresponding to button event, we have action listener, right? Which is defined inside java.awt.event package. So the action listener interface contains a single method that is action performed method that will be invoked when some event or some action will be generated from a button, right? So what is the use of this method? It is invoked when some action occurs from a source like a button or this is only the method which is present inside the action listener interface or in order to use this method we have to implement the action listener interface in our program also let us move what uh, let us move uh, uh, further and understand what are the steps to implement event handling in your programs so these are the steps so let us move to the eclipse id and understand and implement these different steps in order to implement a button event in login form so let us move to the eclipse id here so I will just close this form now and you can see what are the different steps to event event handling. What are the different steps to implement event handling corresponding to a button. So to handle the button we will use the action event in Java AWT for these are the three steps. Step number one is implement action listener interface. So let us move to the login form or this is your step number one implement action listener interface. So here simply you will write implement action listener interface which is present inside java.awt.event package. So this is your step number two. What is step two? Sorry, this is the step number one. What is step two? Step two is you know very well if some source will generate some event. So who will get the notification? So definitely some listener will get the notification of it but before getting the notification these listener must be registered with a particular source so how will you register a particular listener simply this is the step number two so let us move to the code so here at the end of the program so let me just show you what is the code of this program first we have created a class that is extending a jframe and implementing the action listener interface Inside it, we are creating or we have created two labels, username and password, two buttons, login and reset, one text field and one password field. And these are the properties of your JFrame. This is the code of username and text field. This is the code of your password field. This is the not password. This is password label. And this is for password field. This is the code of reset and login button and this is the way how will you make your frame visible or inside main function you are just calling this constructor. 
so let us move to the step number two so what is step two step two is add or we can say register the listener right so how will you register the listener so the step number two you have to register the listener corresponding to a source so what are the source who is generating some event the login button and the reset button is generating some event so here you will just register the uh, you know listener corresponding to this login or add action listener you will register with this current object so this is the way to register the listener right login dot add action listener in the similar way you can register with the reset button so simply you will write here reset dot add action listener and this means we are registering the action listener corresponding to the login and reset button for the current object for the current instance right this is the step two step three is override action performed method means this is the handler part which will handle the event right so let us move to the code and you will go here you can see here login form it the compiler is complaining what is the complaint we are implementing some listener right and that is the interface if you are implementing some interface so you have to override that method also right so click on the login form and select this first option add unimplemented method so here now the compiler is not complaining let us move down for here the action performed method is overridden or inside it we have an object of action event class so we can see this is the handler part right this is the handler which will handle the event means when you click on the login or reset button what happened the complete code will be written inside it so let me help you to understand how to write the code of login button and the reset button right so let us write this code so i am just adding a condition means if condition you have selected which kind of button so i will write i will check which button you have clicked means reset button you have clicked or login button you have clicked so how will how will i check so inside action event we have a method that is a get source method so here i will use the e dot get source method if e dot get source equal equal that login here okay if it is login so here you will add the code of login right or else if you can check here what are you doing if your e dot get source it may be like a reset button so here you are checking if it is a reset so what will you do? so if your clicked button is a reset button so what will you do you will perform some reset operations okay so what is the reset operations for example i will run this program and you will see what is the output of it so here for example you will write your name user uh, name is amit and password is you will write something and if you click on reset button you can see it is not performing anything it is not resetting it is not removing this content of username and password so how will you remove it simply you can add the code inside this if e dot get source is equal equal reset so what will you do you will just do this text field dot set text and this set text will be blank in the similar way you can write gt2 dot set text okay it will be a uh, blank understand so what is the meaning of it so what is gt1 and gt2 gt1 and gt2 these are the text field this is gt1 for username this is gt2 for the password field let us run this program and you will see what is the output of it so here we go you will run this program here i am entering the name is amit password is something and click on the reset button you can see your data is removed here so this event is working the reset button is working right now okay so let us do some coding of a login button also so inside it i will add the code of login button so how will you add so 
first i will just retrieve the username so i will write i will get the username is equal so username is equal how will you get the jt1 dot get text right jt1 dot get text from the text field one you will get the username or in the similar way you will get the password string password is equal jt2 dot get password so password return type is the array of characters so you can create an object of a string or you can put inside it this is now from the array of characters you are making a string so whatever you will enter in this field amit and the password that will come or will store in a variable user name and password now after this you can apply some condition what can be the condition or you can add if else statement here what is the condition if username dot equals is what amit here right or here you can add a condition if password dot equals is what like password is amit one two three so what can you do you can display message okay you can display a message but where will you display message so you can add a uh, one additional label on this login form also in order to display message so let me add a label also so here i will create one more label also that is a label name is result and i will create a label right so let me create that label here right so how will i create that label okay so simply you will create i will write add a result label so simply will write result not reset result is equal new j label right or i will not add any string i will not attach any string with this label okay it will display the success message only so result dot set bounds i can set some position like x value is 50 y value is 200 width is 300 and height is 30 and after creating this label you can add this label to the frame right so this label we have created so what can you do you can come here or here you can just display message result dot set text okay result dot set text or inside this you can write a success message so what can be the success message you can write login successful right you can write a login successful else you can display login failed or here you can write login failed if the username is not amit and the password is not amit123 so it will say login failed right you can write this message login field okay so i hope i think this uh, code is completed let us run this program and you will see what is the output of so here we go this is a login form here you will enter your username is amit password is amit123 click on the login button okay it is not working it is not performing let us see what is the error right okay so what the mistake we have done here we have used the x value with this particular label is 500 so we have to make it like 50 right so the x value is beyond the login form right so let me just close it i will save this program i will run it again and you will see what is the output so here we go you can see the rest part is the same only we have to do this set bound result dot set bound the x value will be 50 and rest your code will be the same right this code will be the same here you can see 
let me enter the name is amit and the password is amit123 so i will click on login it will show login successful right if i will do something different password it will display the login field so login button is working and here you can see the reset button is also working so guys this is the way how can you implement a button event in your login form so i hope you understand the concept of it let me just show you the complete code again so this is your login form here we have created a login form these are the different field over the form step one is implement action listener step two you will register these two listener step three you will override the action performed this is the handler code means when you click on the button what will happen so i think we have done for the day and you enjoy this session please do the practice of it you can write multiple examples of using different forms and just perform the event handling using action event or action listener thanks for watching bye bye for now have a great day so if you like this video please write your feedback in the comment section bye bye have a great day